in the aftermath of Japan's historic lunar landing with the SLIM, or SLIM, spacecraft, a power glitch cut short the celebration, raising questions about the incident's specifics. The focus also shifts to NASA's response, particularly given its recent setback with the Astrobotics mission. Join us in today's episode of Great SpaceX to uncover the details of Japan's lunar achievement and explore NASA's reaction in the wake of challenges faced. In a historic achievement, a Japanese moon lander named the Smart Lander for Investigating Moon successfully touched down on the lunar surface. However, the mission faces an unexpected challenge as the spacecraft's solar cell is not generating the essential electricity needed for its continued operation. Despite its overall health, SLIM is expected to deplete its batteries within hours of landing due to the lack of solar power. This unfortunate development leaves the spacecraft powerless, rendering it incapable of receiving commands or transmitting vital telemetry and scientific data back to Earth. There remains a glimmer of hope for the probe's revival. If SLIM landed in an incorrect orientation and the angle between the sun and the solar cells improves over time, there is a possibility it could wake up. However, officials emphasize that this outcome is far from certain. To truly grasp the reality of the situation, let's take a look back at its journey up until this point. Launched on September 7th from the Tanakashima Space Center in southern Japan, the 1,600-pound spacecraft took a long and looping route toward the moon, finally arriving in lunar orbit on Christmas Day. Its initial orbit was highly elliptical, taking SLIM within 373 miles or 600 kilometers of the lunar surface at its closest point, and 2,485 miles or 4,000 kilometers away at its most distant. Early on Sunday morning, January 14th, SLIM performed a crucial engine burn, circularizing its orbit at the 373 mile altitude and setting the stage for descent and landing operations. Those operations ramped up with another burn yesterday, which took SLIM's orbit down to about 9 miles or 15 kilometers above the lunar surface. They culminated in the landing try, which began today at about 10 a.m. Eastern and wrapped up 20 minutes later. Everything appeared to go smoothly. SLIM hit its various milestones during the descent, and the lander communicated with its handlers all the way through and beyond its historic touchdown. However, JAXA couldn't immediately confirm SLIM's status after landing. About an hour later, the agency gave us an update via the press conference explaining the probe's power problems. It's unclear why these solar cells aren't working, JAXA officials said. But it's unlikely they were damaged during the touchdown because SLIM's other hardware appears to be fine and functional. It's possible that the lander isn't oriented toward the sun as expected, according to JAXA. And according to some other opinions, it landed and rolled. This is because the landing was too fast and didn't shut down the engines immediately. It could have also landed with too much lateral velocity. Angular momentum makes things roll further in low lunar gravity. In another case, five crushable 3D-printed aluminum lattice landing legs helped the lander absorb the impact of touchdown on the lunar surface. The SLIM has been communicating to the Earth station, and it is receiving commands from the Earth accurately, and the spacecraft is responding to these in a normal way, Hitoshi Kuninaka, Director General of the Japan Aerospace Research Agency, or JAXA, told reporters in translated remarks. 10 kilometers was the altitude from which descent was made, so if the descent wasn't successful, then there would have been a crash at a very high speed. Then the spacecraft's function would have been lost completely. However, it seems that the solar cells are not generating electricity at this point in time. And since we are not able to generate electricity, the operation is being done using batteries. We are trying to get stored data back to the Earth, and we are making efforts to maximize the scientific return. Despite the rather unclear future, this is still a huge success for the Japanese space industry. Only the United States, Russia, China, and India have successfully landed spacecraft on the moon. Three privately financed landing missions have been launched as commercial ventures, but all three failed. Most recently, the Peregrine Lander, built by Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic, was stranded in a highly elliptical Earth orbit after a valve malfunction caused a propellant tank to rupture shortly after launch on the 8th of January. Company flight controllers directed the spacecraft to fall back into the Earth's atmosphere, where it burned up, 
Thursday afternoon. Congratulations, JAXA, on being the historic fifth country to land successfully on the moon. We value our partnership in the cosmos and continued collaboration with NASA, Bill Nelson said in a tweet on X. When asked to score the landing operation for SLIM, JAXA Director General Dr. Hitoshi Kunikawa gave it a 60 out of 100, while also mentioning that he is known for making harsh comments. The team is also working to gather all of the scientific data obtained by the lander. The lander was able to release its two lunar rovers, LEV-1 and LEV-2. The LEV-1 rover moves using a hopping mechanism and is equipped with wide-angle visible light cameras, scientific equipment, and antennas that allow it to communicate with Earth. Meanwhile, LEV-2, also outfitted with cameras, can change shape to move across the lunar surface. The team is receiving a signal from LEV-1, and we'll see whether its cameras were able to capture any images. JAXA officials said they will not definitely confirm the status of LEV-2 until more data is received. The small-scale Slim Robotic Explorer, which launched in September, goes by the nickname Moon Sniper because it carried new precision technology to demonstrate a pinpoint landing. It'll now take up to a month to confirm the success or failure of the pinpoint landing. The accuracy will be assessed with observations from lunar orbit. An accurate landing is not just an engineering feat, but one that could enable greater science returns. The SLIM mission, with its precision landing system, hopefully marks a more successful year of lunar landings by robotic explorers. Catherine Joy, a reader in Earth Sciences at the University of Manchester, shared, Touching down in just the right spot is key to targeting really interesting lunar locations that can help us test key science questions about the evolution of the moon and where we want to explore to assess possible lunar resources. While impressive in their own right, this mission's landing ambitions are also key to the future of scientific lunar exploration, the Planetary Society wrote in a mission description. Global interest in the moon is growing with many nations and commercial entities entering the field added the nonprofit advocacy group, which is led by former TV science guy Bill Nye. As lunar exploration advances, so will the need to target specific sites to address salient science questions. SLIM's mission architecture hopes to shift the standards of lunar landing missions, from touching down where it's easy to setting down exactly where desired. SLIM also aimed to show that small, relatively inexpensive spacecraft are capable of impressive exploration feats. The probe weighs just 440 pounds, or 200 kilograms, without propellant, and its mission cost about 18 billion yen, or $120 million US, to develop, according to the Planetary Society. SLIM wasn't the first Japanese spacecraft to aim for a lunar touchdown. The nation put a tiny lander called Omotenashi on NASA's Artemis I mission, which sent an uncrewed Orion capsule to lunar orbit and back in late 2022. But Omotenashi's handlers couldn't establish communications with the probe and its landing attempt was abandoned. The private Hakuto-R lander took a swing in April of 2023, but was unsuccessful. Hakuto-R, which was built and operated by the Tokyo company iSpace, made it to lunar orbit but crashed during its touchdown try after getting confused by the rim of a lunar crater. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.